Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to our second edition of PodGo Live. We're going to be live streaming for the next half hour, talking about all about PodGo, Line 6, answering your questions you may have. My name is Doc Brown. I'm a product specialist with Line 6. So yeah, I'm going to be talking about PodGo today. Specifically, I'm going to be diving into the snapshots feature. So I'm going to be talking about what that is, how we use it. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to sound off in the comments. I will try and answer those today. And if not me, I know we have some other product specialists hanging out in the comments section, so they may may answer those for you. But yeah, like I said, we're going to be hanging out here for about a good half hour, maybe a little longer. And today I'm specifically going to be running over PodGo and the snapshot, Snapshots feature. Excuse me. So let's go ahead and dive right in and talk about what Snapshots are. So Snapshots are a pretty cool feature inside PodGo. You also see them in our Helix and HX series of products. But basically, it's kind of like having a preset within a preset. And this is really cool because you can seamlessly switch between different guitar tones. So whether you want reverb and delay to spill over, whether you just want to be able to switch seamlessly between a clean and dirty tone, for example, Snapshots is going to handle all of those types of situations. So very cool feature inside PodGo. Um, I'm going to go ahead and explain it today. I'm going to talk about how you can set up a preset of your own using Snapshots, both using the PodGo editor and of course on the unit itself. And we'll dive into some deeper stuff as well too. So without further ado, let's go ahead, dive right in and talk about some uh, snapshot type stuff with PodGo. So I'm just gonna start by pulling up my editor here and let's just kind of talk about what's going on here. So you'll notice up top, I have my signal chain. I have an amp block, I have a cab, I have a set of effects floating around that. And of course I have my volume, my wah pedal and a stereo effects loop if I so choose to use. What's nice about snapshots is that I can control all of these blocks and their parameters with a single press of a foot switch. So if I head to a different snapshot, I can pull up a different set of effects and I can even change its parameters. So you'll notice here if I head over to my cab block, oftentimes most of our parameters are going to be color coded to whatever that block is. So our cab block, traditionally we're going to see red colored parameters and numbers down here. You will notice though that some of these are white and they have brackets. That means that every time I change a snapshot, one of these parameters is going to be changing to a different value. And so on my cab, I only have a few things set up, but if we check out my amp block here, you're going to see that I have quite a few different things changing on here. And if I were to just go ahead and start switching some snapshots for you, just to give you kind of a preview, you're going to notice that as I go, that I'm also going to have some different blocks turned on. So now as I head to snapshot three here, I have my overdrive and my delay click on in the signal chain. And to tell what snapshot we're on, you could always just keep your eye up here. Just to the right of the preset name, there's this little pull down menu with these camera icons with numbers. And that's going to tell you what snapshot you're on. So really quickly now, I want to head back to my pod go. And I just want to kind of show you what I mean when I say snapshots can seamlessly transition between your different guitar tones. So for starters, Let's go ahead and just head to preset mode. I'm going to hit my mode foot switch. And I realize there's a little bit of glare on the screen here, but uh, I'm just going to switch between presets and I'm just going to hold the cord and kind of show you what happens when we switch from one preset to the next. So go ahead. <laughs> Kid here, I have a variety of different tones set up there. And what's happening is I load one preset the machine is thinking, it's loading one in, it's loading the other out, and we have those few milliseconds where there's no audio passing. For most playing situations, you might only use a preset per song, and you know, this isn't going to be a big deal. But sometimes you do want to be switching between your clean, your dirty, your more affected tones, and have it all happen seamlessly, and even have reverb and delay trail spill over. So, if I head into snapshot mode, what I'm going to do is press the bank up and down at the same time, and you're going to notice that my screen up here changes, my play view, and now I have control of my four snapshots. So here's a preset that I've already pre-baked. I'm just going to kind of take you through the different sounds, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, talk about what's happening and show you how you can set it up yourself. Real quick, let me just head over to the comments and see if we have anything going on. Looks like we have Mr. Steve Gear with us. What's up? Uh, Judd's asking, I just got an HX effects. Is this the same? Yep, um, these snapshot features are going to work pretty much the same on PodGo as they would HX effects. So all this information is going to be applicable to you, Judd. Thanks for asking. David says, I just got my PodGo last week. I still don't know how Drive2 are assigning control by foot switches. Hopefully we can answer that. 
And why are there weird noises when you switch snapshots? Maybe you're hearing the foot switches up on the desk. Um, I'll also get into kind of the different how spillover works with snapshots. So maybe that will answer your question as well. But let's go ahead, jump back now. So I was just kind of explaining about how when we switch presets, we get that, you know, a couple millisecond gap in audio. So back to my snapshots here, I'm just going to play through these. And as I switch between snapshots, you're going to hear that there's no audio gap. So this first snapshot I have is set relatively clean. I'm going to a crunch sound after that to a lead sound to a more affected sound. And I'll just kind of play through them. Here's that first snapshot. <laughs> So that was my first snapshot, very clean tone. Now as I head to my second one, if I just hold out a chord here, and as I switch there, you hear that transition is seamless. So I went right from my clean tone to this. Kind of more broken up, distorted tone happening there. Next, if I jump from snapshot two to snapshot three, we're gonna have. little bit more of a lead sound happening there and then finally if I head to my fourth snapshot different sound happening there compared to what I had before so obviously a more affected sound now I'm just going to switch through them all so you can hear how seamless that is and this will open up some other talking points so if I just hold a big chord you're going to hear that I'm instantly switching between all those snapshots and when I have reverb and delay I get nice little spillovers of all those things Something you may have noticed that when I switch between snapshots three and four, because I'm actually changing my reverb and delay times, you get those artifacts like you would if you were messing with a regular stomp box and its delay or reverb time. I'm going to show you how we can get rid of those sounds later in uh, this live stream. But for now, let's talk about how we can set up this type of preset on your own. So I'm going to head back to my Pavio editor here. And let me just quickly jump over to the questions and see how we're doing here. Um, does Line 6 have any plans to come out with an amp head that is based off the Helix technology or comparable to an HD-147? Great question. Um, we're always kind of forward thinking. If you're interested in uh, submitting any sort of product suggestions, you could always head to ideascale.com or that's line6.ideascale.com and that's where we take product suggestions for all that cool type of stuff. It's all user-based and that's where a lot of the ideas from Helix and PodGo came from, so really great to use. So. Now that we've kind of given a basic overview of what snapshots are, what they do, I'm going to start by just building a preset from scratch and show you how we can set up snapshots on your own. So I'm just going to navigate to the end of my preset list in PodGo here and click a blank preset. So the way the PodGo presets worked is that some of this is already populated and filled in for us. For sake of time today, I'm just going to kind of fill in with some amps and effects really quickly and then we'll kind of go ahead and set up in a similar fashion how I did. We'll go from like clean to dirty to affected type tones, all using snapshots. But for starters, let's just pick out some amps and uh, some effects that we're going to use. So since we're using snapshots, I really like to use snapshots basically to go from kind of that clean to dirtier sound using the amp. So I'm going to choose an amp model that really can go from, let's say, clean to dirty. So I'm going to choose this Brit J45. And let's just go ahead and add some effects around that. So I'm going to choose the classic Scream 08 as my overdrive pedal. Um, let's change out this compressor pedal. Oops. Let's go ahead and let's just make that a modulation for now. We can make that a tremolo. 
I'll just leave that reverb, or I mean, excuse me, that delay is fine. I'm just gonna change out this reverb really quick. So these will just be the effects that we're working with for our signal chain. So let's go ahead and start back in my amp block here. And let's go ahead and just see what sound we're working with and we'll tweak from there. So just for starters. sounding you know kind of a martial edge of breakup sound going on there like I said we're gonna be dialing this preset in sort of from a clean to dirty to lead and maybe an affected type tone in there so let's go ahead and start with our first snapshot I first want to show you how to set these up just inside the podgo editor then I'll head back to the podgo unit itself and show you how you can set things up right on the unit in case you have to do that you don't use the editor whatever the case may be Alrighty, so first things first, we want to build a cleaner sound to start with, so we're going to need to clean this amp up. The two things that really control the kind of the breakup, the gain, the distortion of the amp are going to be the drive parameter and the master volume. So you can think of the drive as controlling that initial preamp, and then the master is controlling that power amp section. So to have these controlled by snapshots, very easy to do. I'm just going to right click either on this slider here or right on the number and that's gonna open this controller menu. So from here, if I wanted to assign the drive to let's say a foot switch and have it change between different values, I could do that. But for today's purposes, I'm just gonna right, excuse me, click on this uh, snapshots icon in the bottom right corner here. And you'll notice now our parameters turn white. It has the brackets around it. That means that for each snapshot, this can change. So what I'm gonna do is just bring this drive down a little bit to clean it up and do a quick sound check. <laughs> Sounds decent. I could tell though that bringing down the drive has also, we have less volume now. So what I wanna do is head to my channel volume. I'm gonna make that controllable by snapshots as well. And I'm just gonna bring that up to make up for that volume loss we had by cleaning up the drive, so. Decent sounding clean tone there. While we're here, since I know we're going to be making some more changes later on, I'm going to go ahead and set up my master to change with snapshots, as well as my EQ section. So I'm going to do the presence, and then my bass, middle, and treble as well. All right, so we have a pretty good platform for a clean tone here. We're just going to keep this first snapshot simple. The last thing I might want to tweak with this is the reverb. So it was a little much for my taste. All I'm going to do is assign that decay to the snapshots and I'm gonna bring that down a bit. Do a quick sound check. Great, I don't want a ton of reverb, just a little splash to give it some life here. Um, and while I'm on this block, I'm probably gonna be having my mix and my pre-delay changing later, so I'm gonna go ahead and already set those up to snapshots. All right, so we have snapshot one set up. This is gonna be our clean tone. Let's just hear it one more time. Nice straight ahead clean tone there. Nothing too crazy happening, but nice sounding and it's gonna work. So after that, I'm gonna head up here, um, right across from my preset name. I'm gonna choose the snapshots here. And I'm just gonna head to snapshot two. Now we're gonna be working, setting up a completely different sound on this snapshot. So let's say for this one, I'm gonna do more of a crunch type of rhythm tone. Um, probably change up my reverb as long as well with it. So let's go ahead and start making some changes. So we already have these parameters set to snapshots. They're lit white, they have the brackets. There's also the camera icon just to the left of the slider. So we don't have to do anything, we just have to make the changes that we want to happen. So I was said I wanted this one to be more of a crunch style tone, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring up that drive a little bit. Uh, let's see how it sounds on seven. And I'm gonna head to my bridge pickup too. <laughs> All right, decent sounding, a little boxy. We're gonna have to make some tweaks as we go. It also got a bit loud compared to that clean tone. So immediately, I'm just gonna bring down that channel volume. Let's bring it down to five. I'm gonna bring my master volume up, just make that power amp section work harder. And I'm gonna just go ahead and dime out my EQ here. 
it's a very popular choice to make when you're working with a sort of vintage Marshall style amp is to dime out that EQ. Other amps, you know, you may want to be a little more conservative, but for these vintage Marshalls, it works excellently. Next thing I might want to change is I'm going to head to the cab block, and as I mentioned before, I thought it just sounded a little boxy for a crunch rhythm type of tone. If I take a look at my mic here, I'm using the ribbon mic, which is a bit darker of a sound. I'm going to go ahead and assign that to snapshots, and I'm going to change that to a dynamic mic that's going to give us a little more of an aggressive in-your-face type of sound. So let's just hear this 420. <laughs> I think that's sounding a lot better. Let's hear these back to back. So we came from the 121. Sounds a little bit boxy to me, so I'm just gonna head to the 421 dynamic microphone. And that to my ear sounds a little bit more open. For anybody who's wondering, I am monitoring on a PowerCab 112 today just to get some room sound and hear everything I'm doing. So, I think I like how that's sounding. And if you're wondering, well we made a change on the cabinet block on Snapshot 2, we didn't do it on Snapshot 1. If we head back to Snapshot 1, you'll notice that our ch nothing has changed. We're still set at that 121 ribbon mic just like we left it. So that's really great. So I'm going to head back to Snapshot 2 and finish it up here. Um, amp sound decent. For sake of time, I'm not going to get too into the weeds and get Nick picky today. And then finally, let's maybe change up this reverb a little bit. So I think the decay sounds fine, but maybe I'll bring a little more pre-delay in. That's just going to have the reverb happen a bit after my initial attack, which is nice. And maybe I'll just bring up the mix just so we can hear a bit more change between Snapshot 1 and 2. So now we have something like this. <laughs> Sounds pretty decent there. So let's just hear back to back snapshot one and two. So starting again with snapshot one here. To snapshot two now. back to back I can tell that this crunch tone is just a little too loud I'm gonna back down the channel volume just a little bit more for that all right so we've set up snapshots one and two just using the editor I'm gonna to head to the pod go next and just show you how we can do the same type of thing working right on pod go um, let me just check the questions real quick in the stream and see if there's anything going on today or any questions I mean can you detail please a bit difference between channel and master why would you boost one and cut the other that is a great question. So, how I like to think of it basically, master volume is gonna be, once again, that power amp section. So it's gonna be how hard that final tube section is that's gonna be pushing your speakers, you know, in the analog world. So that's gonna not only add volume, but it's gonna add and subtract gain depending on how you move it down. So for instance, if we're just on this sort of crunch preset right now, and we take a listen again. <laughs> Decent amount of overdrive. There. If I bring down that master though, you're not only going to hear a reduction in volume, but you're also going to hear it start to clean up. So a little less breakup happening there. Bring it down even more. Even less breakup. And I'm not sure if we'll get it to clean up completely. I might need to head to the drive. A lot thinner of a tone, not as more robust as we come down on the master. So I think before we were up near maybe an 8 or a 9. So master is not only affecting our volume, but it's also affecting the sound of the amp. So it really controls part of the amp. Channel volume really isn't part of the amp. When we take a look at an amp and cab model here, you're going to notice that we have that mic model in place. So it's almost like you're listening back to this amp and cab mic'd up in a studio setting. So you can think of the channel volume almost as that slider on the studio mixing board that's controlling your overall volume. So channel volume will let you um, up or down with your volume, but you're not affecting your tone. Whereas master is going to make some tonal changes because it's actually affecting that power amp. Channel volume is just the pure volume. So we got 
a little on a tangent there, but I hope that answers your question there. Um, yeah, any other questions you guys have, feel free to chime right in and we'll answer those. So picking up where we left off, we had just set up snapshot one and two. We could hear those again real quick. Here's snapshot one, my clean. Snapshot two, the kind of more dirty, broken up. Now what we can do is head to snapshot three here, and I'm gonna set this up on the actual Podgo unit. So we've been using the Podgo editor here. I'm gonna head to the actual unit real quickly and show you how we can just set it up on there. So you can see here, I'm in my play view. I see what my foot switches are controlling and they're controlling my snapshots here. So I'm gonna head to snapshot three. That's gonna be my next sound. I'm gonna press the view button so we can get into my editor view here and I'm gonna start making some changes. So this is gonna be my lead sound. So I'm just gonna turn that drive all the way to 10 for starters. Same thing with the master. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this overdrive pedal, which is really simple to do. Just turn that on. That's gonna happen when I switch snapshots. So if you notice, if I head back now to my performance view, you can see that little overdrive turning off on snapshot one and two. It's just gonna be on on snapshot three. But let's say I want to assign some other parameters to a snapshot. Maybe if we head over to my reverb and just say, for sake of example, we want to assign this high cut to snapshots. We want it to change for whatever reason. So all I'm going to need to do is press on this knob and turn at the same time. And I held it a little too long there while I was talking. But if you press and turn here, you're now going to notice that it turns white and it has the brackets. It's being controlled by snapshots. So for this preset, I also want my delay to turn on. So I'm just gonna activate that effect. And maybe we'll set the feedback to also be controlled by snapshot. So just press and turn using this knob right here. It's simple enough. I could page on to my next page. I have a few more parameters. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dial down that mix. Once again, press and turn so it's controlled by snapshots. And I also want some spillover to happen when I'm switching snapshots, whether delays and reverbs are turning off or just changing times. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the trails on for both my reverb and delay real quick since I hadn't done that already. So I've been kind of talking and dialing in. Let's see how this sounds real quick. I may need to make some changes. I could already tell with my single coil pickups, it's a bit noisy. So here's a cool trick you can do, especially if you wanna save a block space. If you head to the input right here, you actually have a noise gate that you can turn on and you could set your threshold and your decay and all those fun settings from there. We could take it a step farther though. I can press and turn on that gate and actually have it controlled by my snapshots too. So obviously for my clean tone, I'm probably not gonna need that noise gate. I can leave it off. But here for this dirty tone, we got a lot of gain. I could tell my single coils are getting noisy. Anyways, enough talk. Let's just hear this sound real quick. See what we've done. <laughs> Quick little sloppy noodle there for you. So you can hear we have um, some different guitar tones happening there. Obviously turning on that overdrive, that delay puts us way more in lead territory. So let's just head back to our performance view. Once again, just hear all these snapshots back to back. Sorry, not charging for wrong notes today, but that's gonna be snapshot three. As I head now back to snapshot one. I could hear my guitar slipping out of tune real quick, so let me just take a second here. Wasn't too bad, but bad enough to bother me. All right, so then we've gone ahead now and set up a snapshot right here on the unit instead of using the editor. For my final snapshot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this more of an affected tone. I'm gonna change up my reverb and delay times, and then we're gonna talk about how we can remove the artifacts that come about when you have delay and reverb times changing like that. So we're on snapshot four, aim to make this an affected one. So for starters, I'm gonna turn off this tube screamer type sound, we're not gonna need that. I'm gonna back down on the drive on my amp. I'm also gonna bring down the master volume a bit, and I can go ahead and bring up that channel volume here. So let's just check our clean tone real quick. All right, and we have a very short delay and reverb time there. So all I'm gonna wanna do 
Let's head to my delay here. And I think I'll switch back to my editor since it's a little clearer to see for y'all. And basically what I'm gonna do here, I'm actually gonna change this note sync. Let's go ahead and have that uh, set to a snapshot. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to maybe a dotted type sound here. I want more feedback, I want more mix, and let's just give that a quick test. All right, that sounds pretty decent. Next, I'm gonna head to my reverb, and really I just wanna kind of wash it out here. I just wanna create a more affected sound for sake of example here. So now we have something like this. Nice sounding affected tone happening there. So if we go ahead now and switch back to snapshot three from this. Especially as I switch between those, you're gonna hear kind of those weird pitch bendy sort of sounds as my delay changes time. So if I head back to my pod go and we just keep an eye on my delay here, as we switch from an eighth to a dotted eighth, you're gonna hear that weird swishing pitch artifacty sound one more time so you could probably hear that sound it's just like if you're using a delay pedal on the floor and started messing with the time knob you're gonna hear all these weird sounds happening so how can we get rid of those let's head back to my pod go and talk about some of the deeper setup features here so what we can do is if we hit our page left and page right at the same time, we're gonna open up some options to get the global settings. So I'm just gonna press on knob five here, open up my global settings. And to change whether or not we hear those artifacts, I'm just gonna scroll over to the last menu here, which is MIDI tempo. And what you can do there, oh wait, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry, this was actually in preferences. I thought it'd be in tempo just because it's a time change, but it's actually in preferences, my mistake. So it's gonna be on knob three here. It's gonna be called tempo pitch. And right now we have it set as authentic. So as if you were changing that delay time, just pulling that knob on your pedal, it's gonna make those sounds. If we change it to transparent, we're not gonna hear those sounds as much. They're gonna get removed. So now if I head back to my play view here and we head between snapshots three and four. <laughs> Still getting a bit of preset spillover, so we hear those delay and reverb spill over between each snapshot, but we're not hearing all those crazy pitch changing, weird sounding artifacts that you get with changing delay and stuff like that. So that's one of the deeper editing things with snapshots. Let's talk about some of the other things with snapshots and maybe a quick review. So what are snapshots? Basically, they let you seamlessly change between different sounds within a preset. It's almost like having a preset within a preset. So you can affect the state of a block, whether it's on or off. This excludes the looper. You can change the parameters of any of these blocks. So anything that can be controlled by knobs one through five, right below the pod go screen, you can assign to a snapshot. So that can mean the mix of your delay, your amps gain, even the mic model. And like I said, up to 64 of these things can change per preset. So that's really powerful. The final thing that can change with snapshots is gonna be the tempo. So that's gonna mean the current system tempo. So this might mean whether you're syncing up to a song and each snapshot's a different song or you want different delay times, whatever it might be. But the default is gonna be per preset and that's where we can head into that global settings MIDI tempo and set it to per snapshot. So let me just show you how we do that real quick. Once again, from my Podgo edit screen, hitting page left and right at the same time. Knob five to access my global settings. And this time I'm gonna use this top knob to scroll to that MIDI tempo and from here on knob four, we can select whether our tempo is controlled globally, per preset, or per snapshot. So that's one of your options when you're setting up snapshots there. Let's talk about some other deeper snapshot related settings. So snapshot edits, you have the option of whether they're recalled or discarded. So this determines whether those edits are remembered whenever you return to a snapshot. A good example of this is let's say you're using kind of the same setup we did today. Snapshot one is clean, snapshot two is your crunchy rhythm, and snapshot three is your lead. Let's say that day you get to your lead snapshot and you decide to click on your wah pedal and you leave it on and you head to snapshot two. 
Now when you head back to Snapshot 3, do you want that wah pedal to still be on or do you want it to return just to the way that snapshot's supposed to be? So that's kind of where Recall and Discard comes into. Do you make any changes whether you want them to be saved or not? And once again, if we head back to Pod Go, I'm in my global settings here. I haven't left them. So if I go now all the way to Preferences, then I could change my snapshots edits from Recall to Discard. So I have them on Recall right now. Basically, if I head back to my performance view here, and let's say, let's head uh, this view and snapshots. If I were to head to snapshot three now, and what I'm gonna do is just turn on my wah pedal here. And now, that was not originally how we set up that snapshot, but if I head to snapshot one and back to snapshot three, hopefully you can still see in that signal chain my wah is still active. So that's a little bit about the snapshot edits, recall this card. I think I already talked about this other one, tempo pitch determines how the delay repeats sonically behave when pressing the tap button or changing delay times with snapshots. So beyond snapshots, this is helpful if you're just using the tap tuner button, tap a tempo out, and you don't want all those crazy pitch warbles. So authentic, like I said, will produce those natural pitch fluctuations. Transparent minimizes those sounds some other settings, um, how you access your snapshots mode and how that sort of functions, you can also control from your global settings. So right now, if we head back to my pod go again, doing a little switching here. When I choose a snapshot, it stays in snapshot mode. Now this is not the factory default setting. If I once again head to my global settings, page left and right, click knob five there or press knob five. And then what I need to do is head to switches and pedals. And then snapshot mode, you could either set as auto return, manual, or toggle. So when it's on auto return, if I head back now, every time I hit a snapshot, it's gonna take me back basically to my preset view. So you have the option on how you wanna do that. Your mode foot switch, of course, can take you back and forth. And then finally, you've been noticing that I've been using bank up and down at the same time to access snapshots. Otherwise, it just lets me go through various banks. We can change how that functions too. Once again, page left and right, knob five for global settings. And then this time, what I'm gonna do is change my up and down switches. I have the option of jumping banks like I have it set up. I can just go individual presets. I could go even individual snapshots. So now if we just head to snap mode, you'll notice that my bank up and down buttons are now just jumping through snapshots. Super easy, super simple. All right, so we've talked a bit about snapshots today. Let me head over to the questions real quick and see if we have anything going on here. Thanks so much for explaining this crystal clear. You got it, happy to help. Let's see, David says, I downloaded some presets and they had multiple things assigned to foot switch one or two. How is that done? And thanks, great question, David. Yep, so if you want, you can assign multiple things to a preset, excuse me, a foot switch. So I'm just gonna head back to my Podgo edit and it's really easy to do in the Podgo editor. So for instance, if I right click on uh, my overdrive pedal here and I head to that second option, bypass assign, you're gonna see that I can assign it to any of my six foot switches or if you have external ones set up, you could also do that. But let's say if I wanted my Tube Screamer to have the same foot switch as my Plate Reverb, for instance, I could just click on that and they're both gonna be controlled from there. If I wanted to do it on the actual unit, I'm gonna head mode I'm going to press view so I'm in my editor view and I'm going to select, let's say I want to change whatever my bias trim is set to. I can go ahead and hit my action button. Wait a minute, what is it? Uh, sorry, I hit my page left and right and then I'm going to hit bypass control. And from here I can set which foot switch it is. So as you see as I move it around you're going to see this blue light move along, around with it and I could choose whatever foot switch I want it to be controlled by. Once again, if you want to have multiple things on a foot switch, you just select the same foot switch there. Great question. Thank you for that one. All right. So we have covered quite a bit today in terms of snapshots, how you set them up, how you're using the editor, how you set them up on Pod Go. If you ever want additional help, we have a really cool program going on right now. We have something called Helix Skype Lessons. You can sign up for these lessons. You can hang out with me or another product specialist for an hour and answer all your questions about whether it be Helix, Helix LT, Helix Rack, any of our HX products, even PodGo, PowerCab, 
just head up to that link, go ahead, sign up, and uh, yeah, we can hang out for an hour, answer all your questions, talk about tone, whatever you want to do. It's a ton of fun. We've done about, oh, I don't know, we're getting probably close to 100 now, so it's been a lot of fun, that resource is out there. Once again, I want to thank you all for hanging out and uh, joining our live stream today. We'll be back again next week at the same time, talking about some different topics, so um, hope to catch you then, and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers!